Hello and welcome to a special interview for The Wire supported by Glenlivet Books. As 2021 winds to a close, we focus our attention on Kashmir, the situation in the valley, the political parties functioning in the state, and most importantly, how do they relate to the politics of the rest of India. My guest is the former Chief Minister of the State as it used to be and President of the National Conference, Farooq Abdullah. Dr. Abdullah, let's start with the Delimitation Commission. It's all over the papers and the news at the moment. Its draft proposal has suggested increasing seats in the Jammu and Kashmir Assembly by seven, but six of those will go to Jammu, only one to Kashmir. And this is despite the fact the 2011 census has said Kashmir has a population 15 lakh greater than Jammu. As president of the National Conference, how do you view this proposal? You see, first of all, Karan, I'd like to tell you, nation is going to have delimitation done in 2016, 2026. We could do it in when I was the chief minister. At that time, we moved a proposal that when the nation is going through, at that time, we will not do it now, we'll do it with the nation. I can't understand what was the hurry of BJP to get this done. Now it's clear. You see, you see the population. You yourself said 2011 pop, uh, census shows Kashmir has more population. And basically, it was on population basis that seats are organized, increased. and But here, the commission, on the other hand, has completely ignored Kashmir and added seats in Jammu, fulfilling the dreams of BJP that they will win these seats and therefore make a government. That's how we feel. So you're they haven't done justice. You're they saying two justice. things. They've deliberately advanced the delimitation. Yes. Because they want to reduce the number of seats. Exactly. And that's precisely what the commission has proposed. They're yes. going to give one extra to Kashmir, six more to Jammu, and the difference between the two, which used to be nine seats, is now reduced to just four. You see, I'll tell you one thing more. When we went to the commission, uh, my partner, uh, member of parliament from Anantana, Justice Masoodi, put before them that we have sent a letter to you, which you have not replied in which we said that the matter is pending with the Supreme Court. And therefore, this exercise that you're doing is illegal. And uh, first of all, the, the, the chairman of the commission said they, they haven't seen the letter. The, probably the letter has been kept away from them or from her. Uh, secondly, I feel that uh, when we spoke about it, she said, yes, uh, I accept that um, uh, this exercise has been done, but whatever Supreme Court will say, that will be binding on us. But this is very that interesting. That is one point. A, the letter you sent wasn't shown to no, the chairman of she, the commission. She said Justice it very clearly. Design. We haven't seen that letter. And secondly, she seemed to agree that what they're doing could be in breach of the Supreme Court. Yes, she said that we agreed, but we, I have the mandate from the government and the parliament. I am filling that mandate, but. If Supreme Court tomorrow comes up with any suggestions, we have to go by Supreme Court's verdict. In which case, will you now as a party go to the Supreme Court to say that this proposal yes, is a yes. breach of the Supreme Court? We are Court. going to Supreme Court anyway. We are going on to. This and specific, many parties have gone to Supreme on, Court. But on this specific issue that the Delimitation Commission is working in breach of the Supreme Court. Yes, we are going to go. <clears throat> and the way they have gone about it. You see, if they take the population as the, as the thing, then... Kashmir should get also more seats. So this, <clears throat> why is it that they're given only as one seat and that also in Kopara region? What about other places? So is this Sirinagar itself has grown so much or in Jammu, can you imagine? There is a place called, you know, Gandhinagar. The population of that is so has grown so much. They should have got another seat there. You're Rather hoping than, that when you go to the Supreme and even Court, in West uh, Jammu, the, 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 see let me put it, it has become this. unwielding. You're hoping that when you go to the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court will stop the exercise that the Delimitation Commission is carrying out. But if it doesn't, if it doesn't, because remember, even on the 2019 matter, the Supreme Court didn't act. It claims it can reverse the clock. Maybe it will take the same position here, not act and say we'll no, reverse see, the clock. They haven't heard our petition as yet. That petition is still there from 
the from a long time since they abrogated Article 3. Absolutely. That is still there. And this also And I don't know be, why they're not listening. And this matter, when you raise with the Supreme Court, could be similarly kicked into the long grass. No, so my, because there are so many others. For instance, Kashmiri Pandits feel they should have seats. And Ashok Ban, one of the senior uh, advocates in the Supreme Court, has also gone. So you're confident that and because... And many of the others will go. So you're confident that because a lot of different people are going to the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court will act, it will stay... What the, uh, well, we hope Supreme Court will act. We can't force Supreme Court Let me Court ask you act, this. But we hope Supreme Court will do justice. If it doesn't, what will you then do? Will you then accept well, well, what the well, Delimitation Commission we can't, has proposed? We can't jump the gun. Let's wait. Let's see what Supreme Court says. And once it says, once it gives its direction, then we will take the second step. But and I'll are, come and tell you what step we'll take. But at you're that implacably time. opposed to Kashmir only getting one extra seat and Jammu getting six. To that, you are opposed. We are already. Already, we, uh, we uh, as my party has already said so. We have already made it clear. Omar has made it very clear also. And yesterday in the uh, the meeting we held with all us who are in Gupkar Declaration, People's Alliance of Declaration, has also put this forward. That we do not agree with this. And that's why we are going to have a silent protest on the 1st of January. Okay. It's very clear from what you're saying that you're going to go to the Supreme Court. You're going to say to the Supreme Court that the Delimitation Commission's work is in complete and total breach of what the Supreme Court has said. And therefore, it should be stayed and it shouldn't go further. But another aspect of what the Delimitation Commission has done is to increase reserve seats. There will now be 16 reserve seats for the scheduled castes and scheduled tribes, nine of which after the Gujar and Bakarwar. Is that acceptable no, to your no, party? No. You see, scheduled caste has always had seven seats. There's nothing new in them. But there are nine new for nine the scheduled Nine seats tribe. have been created for scheduled tribe. Point here is, already there has been, since Mrs. Gandhi gave scheduled tribe to Gujars and Bakarwals, the Paharis in those regions feel that they have been let down. At that time, Mrs. Gandhi promised in a meeting in 83, March, election time, that if the government of Farooq Abdullah writes to me, I will also like Ladakh, I have given everybody the scheduled tribe, uh, I will also give this to the Baharis also, this so, whole region I'll so give So is this, this acceptable to Farooq Abdullah? But to this day, they have not got this thing. So there is going to be further conflict between these two, uh, you know, parties, that is, the, the Baharis and the Gujars. It's going to divide people further. But what is your party's position on these reserve seats for the Bakarwal and the Gujar? Well, see, we don't mind that. It's, it's all right because they also deserve it. But the point here is, what about the others? They've been left out. They have been left out. So are you going to create more divisions in people's minds? So at Are you going to make a more stronger state by having people come together. So at multiple levels, the Delimitation Commission is creating problems. It's created problems in terms of Jammu and Kashmir. It's creating problems between the Gujarwal and the Baharis. It's yes. creating problems com between communities. And Kashmiri Pandits and others, Sikhs, for instance, they feel let out. The people who come from Azad Kashmir, they feel let out. So the proposal put forward as a draft by the Delimitation Commission is absolutely unacceptable at multiple levels. At multiple levels, yes. Already... Uh, one of the persons has already gone to Supreme Court and others will follow. Let me ask you this. Do you think you made a mistake participating in Monday's meeting of the Delimitation Commission? No, Sajad no. Lone has gone on record to say that your earlier position was that even participation would be tantamount to recognizing and accepting August no, no. 2019. Let me tell you. Have you done that? Let me tell you one thing. If we hadn't gone, we wouldn't have known what they're doing and on what basis they're doing it. You see? Uh, uh, they, people would still say, they have avoided. They, they just don't want to be part of the process. The question is, we don't mind being part of the process, but the process should be for everyone. It can't be just... In other words, you had to participate, otherwise you wouldn't have found out what the draft proposal yes, was. Yes, exactly. We wouldn't have found out what is, how is it done, what has been done, how, how are they thought about it. So by participating, you're not, as Sajad Lone says, tantamount to accepting the 2019 changes? No, we have, we have never accepted those and we will never accept them. Never. What about something else? Has participation in Monday's meeting created differences between you, your son 
And Mehbooba Mufti, let me quote what Mehbooba Mufti said before the meeting. She said, I have no faith in the fairness of the commission. She called it the BJP's commission. After the meeting, she almost boasted when she said, my apprehensions about the delimitation commission weren't misplaced. You were much more trusting. You participated. Is there now a difference between you and no, Mehbooba Mufti? There is no difference. There's no difference. None at all? None at all. None at all. She wouldn't have been in the meeting yesterday if there were differences. We were all together and we stood together and we'll stand together. I'll tell you why I asked this question. Yes. Because many people say actually your People's Alliance for the Gupta Declaration is already fraying and unraveling. You lost Sajad Loan in January and speculation is Mehbooba Mufti will be walking out pretty soon too. <laughs> there are a lot of speculations. That there be. There are parties in Delhi. The main government that wants to divide us at all levels. Do you worry Sajad about... Lone went. Why did he go? Why? Tell me. He says because the promises of the seats that were done, we didn't get them. Did he, did he look into his own self? I'm sure he was maneuvered by Delhi. I'm quite confident. You mean the hand of the BJP lies behind Sajjad Loan yes, party I'm company? Yes, I'm absolutely certain. The two of them who are there are working for them. They're their B party. I have no objection in making myself absolutely clear on this. So Sajjad Loan is not an independent politician. He's a proxy for the BJP. You ask anybody in Kashmir, he'll tell you the same thing. Same thing. What about Mehbooba Mufti? I'll come back to her. People say the reason why she may walk out of the PAGD is because she and your son don't always see eye to eye. They say the only reason she's there is she because the force of not... Farooq Abdullah's personality. You're keeping her there. It's not I'm keeping her there. We all have compulsion of being together to defeat this party called BJP, which is dividing India is that compulsion, on a communal basis. Is that compulsion greater than the personality differences between Omar well, and Mehbooba? Personal Mehbuba? differences may exist. How does it matter? The question here is, India is becoming communal. It was secular. And the government is making it communal. They are dividing people. I'll Muslims come, against Hindus. I'll come to what they're doing and in a moment's all time. All other religion. Look I'll, at the I'll, Christians. I'll come to what they're doing to the country in a moment's time. Let's focus for a while though on Kashmir and particularly on the PAGD. You mentioned attempts made by the BJP to fracture the PAGD. Yes. They have, they, and they will continue to try. They will not succeed. What sort of things are they doing? You said that they were behind you see, Sajjad Loan. Let me tell you. What, why, why Mrs. Home Minister of India... Mufti Sahib, his wife at this age, called by ED. Hmm? What, what sort of people are they? Pressurizing by using all sorts of these, uh, uh, these methods to force people. The, the now the son also. So just you're to saying, make them, you know, you're saying, you're saying the vacillate. Fact, you're saying the fact that Mufti Sahib's wife and son have been contacted by the ED and called for and, questioning. And, and, and Mahbubha herself. And this is to put pressure on Mahbubha to yes. opt out of yes. the AGD. Yes. They've been trying. They have not succeeded up to this time. Do you think they will succeed? No, I don't think so. She could be vulnerable to pressure. No, she will not give. You're absolutely She would rather sure. prefer to die than to come, give in to pressure. She's been an ally of theirs once upon a time. She may well choose to seek comfort in well, their she, security once that again. That you have to ask her. As far as what I see from my side is she is not going to give in. You're confident of that? I'm con my, I am confident. Absolutely confident. So no matter how hard the BJP tries to prize her away or to fracture the PAGD, you believe the PAGD will remain Anybody intact? Anybody who will leave PhD, this uh, organization, I can bet on myself, they will never win unless they rig the election through various agencies. You're confident They will that. never win. People in Kashmir have hate for what they are doing in Delhi. There is no love left for them. You're saying very to me sorry to say. that the PAGD will have the support of the Kashmiri people whenever elections are held? Yes, full support. But there wasn't that much support for the PAGD parties when 2019 happened. Many people said Farooq Abdullah and Omar Abdullah deserved what they got. <laughs> Let me tell you, 
they say a lot of things. What is your media today? Does it say the truth? Is there truth on their faces? All of us were in. They say nobody protested, not a gun was fired. How will they fire when every household had a soldier standing outside with AK-47 and all the weapons they have? And draconian laws where our people are still in the prison on various laws for nothing. So you're saying to me Farooq Abdullah has the love of the Kashmiri people? Time will show. Time will show this nation. But say, are you saying that time will show you have it or time will show you don't? Which of the two? Wait and see. Why are you jumping? Let it come. But you're confident you will win? Yes, so long as they don't rig the bloody machines and they don't use their other people to vote for them and put people behind in various sections and things. There's another challenge you face before the elections happen, and that's the question of statehood and the restoration of statehood. Do you believe that the restoration of statehood should happen before elections, or are you happy for elections to be first and statehood to be restored sometime after? Let me tell you, I'm not sure what BJP wants to do. But we all have a fear that BJP will try to do statehood afterwards and keep us like Delhi, Goa, so the control will remain, not with the people or the people's party or the chief minister, but the control will remain with the governor. That we object to. But then let me ask you, if elections are held before statehood is restored, Will the National Conference participate or boycott? We cannot boycott. Boycott is not our way of our life anymore. So you we have to fight them at every single inch that we have got. We'll fight them legally. We'll fight them by the people. We don't use guns and stones. We'll use Gandhi's method of fighting them till we are alive. So you will contest the elections even if statehood hasn't been restored before they're held. That is clear. That I am absolutely clear. Who does not want to take part in the election, he can go. One of those is your son. He's publicly said that he will not contest elections before statehood is restored. Well, I don't know what he will do. That is his job. But I am going to fight and my party is going to fight. And once again, I'm asking you, you're confident you're going to win? Karan? I trust in God and I'm sure my people will back us. Let's then come to the situation prevailing in the valley today. As the year ends, there's been a fairly sharp rise in violence. Civilian killings have gone up. Police killings have gone up. Terrorist incidents have gone up. Why is this happening? Union Home Minister when he abrogated Article 370, he said the Article 370 is responsible for all these things that have been happening in Kashmir. I want to ask him, today we are not in, in power. They are in power. Have they restored normalcy in Kashmir? Have jobs increased in Kashmir? Have people become more Indians than before? Have the violence gone down? That's what the Home Minister says it has. He says that there's a remarkable improvement in yes, the security the, uh, situation. Look at the figures you've just pointed to me. Is it, is it normal? So you're saying he's lying? <laughs> well, I mean, you can say anything. But that's Ground realities are absolutely different. Absolutely different. Why has Srinagar, which used to be until a few months ago relatively calm and peaceful, suddenly become the epicenter of violence? Yes, because they see what is happening in the nation, how division of people is taking place, how lynching is being done, how we are told you cannot eat this, you can't wear this, you can't pray here, you can't... Don't you think people realize this? This is not India of Gandhi. This is not India of Nehru. So the violence and in Srinagar is the direct response to what is happening to Muslims elsewhere in India. Yes, not only the Muslims. What about Christians? What about others? What about Dalits? They're Hindus. What is happening to them? 
Their daughters are being raped and killed. Let is this ask... what India is? Is this India shining? What then is the mood of the people in the valley as the year ends? Explain that to people because people haven't gone to Srinagar and don't know. Tell them, what do Kashmiris feel? And more importantly... They feel, unfortunately, they feel what is, whatever is happening is pushing them away from the nation. The they, nation does not see their pain, does not see their tragedies. That is what is hurting them most. That so people Kish think that we are honky-dory well. I think time has come when nation must stand with people and make them feel that we feel your pain, we feel your tragedies, and we are part of you. That is what they want. They don't want anything else. When you say Kashmiris feel they're being pushed away, are you saying they feel rejected? They do feel rejected. They feel there's nobody for them. More than alienated, rejected. Yes, absolutely. Karan, I'm not wrong about it. Rejection is much worse than alienation. Alienation is what they feel. They feel they've been left to the corner and they're being further pushed to the corner. Do they want to still be in A group? volcano is getting ready. Remember one thing. In Today Kashmir. it's not Pakistani people coming in to fight for us. It is the young people who are now standing up for themselves. They know they're going to die in one day. But they still stand. Why? Why do they stand? You tell because me. they have no hope, no hope at all, none whatsoever. And Prime Minister's own words on 24th of June, when we all met him, said, Dil ki duri aur dilli ki duri hum dur karenge. Where is that duri being stopped? Where yes. is it? You're saying two very important things. You're saying that people feel rejected, which is much stronger than feeling alienated. You're saying they see no hope, they feel hopeless. And there's a volcano in Srinagar or in Kashmir. Yes, waiting inside to growing. Waiting if to people can't see it, I'm sorry. Waiting to explode. One day it will explode and it will explode in a very big way. Let's not blame any other countries and things like this. It is we and the nation. Can I ask you, sir? Who feel that nation does not see our, our, our illnesses, our tragedies that take place every day. Do Kashmiris feel Indian? We can't go to China. We can't go to Pakistan. We cannot go anywhere else. Are you saying they feel trapped? We are part of this nation. But we see? want this nation to realize we are part of this nation and we want nation to bleed for us. They should feel our pain. They should feel that we joined India, Gandhi's India, not God says India. How do they look upon the Modi government? What do they think of Mr. Modi? I don't want to comment on Mr. Modi. Please forgive me. But you really mean when you say the Kashmiris feel rejected and hopeless and there's a volcano. That's a warning to the country. There's a volcano that will explode. I am warning them. How long do you think you will be dominated by the troops, by the police, by the BSF, by the armed forces? How long? Are you saying civil war could happen? Don't push me to the wall, Karan. I've already seen enough suffering. That silence. And it's beyond me to see any more suffering. That silence, that deliberate silence. I see silence. how my people are suffering every day. Every day they are suffering. There's not a day when they go without suffering. My media can't write honestly. You open any paper, Lieutenant Governor, on every page, DC, Police General, no true news anywhere. Because if he writes true news, he'll be in the police station and he'll be charged, cheated, and he'll be in the jail. But you're saying something even more important now. If the media can't see the truth and can't convey the truth, you're suggesting the rest of India has turned its back on Kashmir. It has. It is how we feel. It's how we feel. 
We feel they don't see our, our uh, they feel we probably are Muslims, it doesn't matter, they can go to hell. Kashmiris believe they are second class citizens and being Muslim makes them perhaps third class. Third or fourth or fifth, I don't know. But we feel that nobody is bleeding. For Tell me something. God forbid this volcano should ever explode. But if that happens, if it explodes, what will the situation be? I hope it doesn't come to that. But if it does, nothing will survive. We'll take India with it. So the very future of India could be at stake. Yes. 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 I'll change subject there because I think what you said is so powerful that people need to think very carefully about what you said. I won't say suggested, what you said. The future of the country is at stake. If that volcano explodes, there'll be nothing left. People feel not just alienated, they feel rejected. They feel India's turned their back on them. There is no hope. I want people to think very carefully about that because I think it's probably the most powerful image of the boiling nature of the situation in Kashmir. I'll come instead now to national politics. I'm going to talk to you about something I know you're also involved in as a national politician, not as a Kashmiri alone. I want to talk to you about opposition unity versus the BJP. I know you're involved in this. The Trinamool can't get on with the Congress party. The Congress party can't get on with the Ahmadmi party. Trinamool can't get on with the left. The Bahujan Samaj can't get on with the Samajwadi party. And Mamta Banerjee has openly said that in fact the NDA doesn't exist. So is opposition unity a contradiction in terms? Is it the wrong term altogether? Karan, if politicians do not realize that India is in danger, and their ego is going to eat them up. This nation and the people who will come after us will never forgive us for what we are doing. It is essential, essential that all of us must unite to fight the forces of divisive forces and communal forces. If we do not, then people that are going to come will never forget, give, forgive us, ever. And we'll all be in hell, burning. Is it ego that is the problem between the Trinamool we and do, Congress? I do not know. I don't understand what is there. Why can't we get together? Why? You tell me. You I can't know. understand. I can't understand. You are close. Because to I tell them. I tell them openly. Let's get together. Who becomes the Prime Minister tomorrow? We can all sit down and discuss. What and answer? arrive at a decision of who is going to be the leader who will lead us for, to the future. You're close friends with the Gandhis. You're very close to Mamta Banerjee. When you say this to them, what do they say? It's not a question of what I say to them. It's a question of if we have to save the nation. We must get together. And, ego and this is the time we must get together now. Not tomorrow. But they're not getting together. They have to. If they want to save this country, I tell them through you. Get together. We may have made mistakes here and there. Let's forget them for the present. Let's concentrate on the present. We'll fight those battles later. But Dr. Abdullah, it's not just ego that's separating the Mamta Banerjee's from the Gandhi's. You also have to ensure... You see, let me tell you one thing. How I feel about it. Tell me. I think Mamta feels hurt that Congress didn't support her against BJP. She was fighting BJP. She was fighting communal forces. This is how I feel. I do not know. I have not met her. I may be wrong, but I tell them, time has come, forgive, 
and forget and save India, save people of this nation, the Muslims, the Christians, the Hindus, the Sikhs, the Jains, the Zoroastrians, everyone who lives in this country. Let's work for them. Hell with my party and another party. Let's get together. How long are we going to suffer and see our people suffer? How long? They haven't got jobs. They haven't got food to eat. Everything has gone sky high. Look at the gas price. Look at the prices of the vegetables and the dal and the oil that our mothers and sisters have to go and take oil from those uh, diyas in Varanasi so that they can cook their meal. Karan, how long are we going to see this tragedy? How long? How long? It's not God who is in danger. It is not Ram who is in danger. It's not Allah who is in danger. It is the people of this nation who are in danger. How long? How does it matter whether you are Hindu or I'm Muslim? We go to the same place. We die the same way. How does it matter? Karan, how long are we going to fight between ourselves and then think of the nation? It's too long. Forget. Forgive. And let's go on. Please, let's work together to save this nation. The passion and emotion in your answer is going to be deeply moving. But I want to still ask you this. How do you view the real possibility of a third Modi victory in 2024? Because if the people you're talking about don't come together, and at the moment, Dr. Abdullah, they're showing no signs of coming together, then that third victory is a likelihood. So how do you view that third victory? I pray to Allah, who is the most powerful, that maybe he'll find a way for us, that we will, in the end, come together. Otherwise, the future of this nation is in danger. The last issue I want to touch with you is about what is happening to Hindus and Muslims in this country. They're getting polarized, they're getting divided, and it seems to be the deliberate electoral strategy of the BJP. They think they get election benefit out of separating and dividing. And sadly, no other political party is pushing back. How do you view this? Tragedy is that Janakya said, divide and win. They're working on the same theory. It's been done in the past also. But they're succeeding. They've done it in the past also. They did it. They divided people to win votes. Why was it that a Muslim leader had to only go to a Muslim place and speak for the party? And a Hindu leader had to go only to the Hindu place and speak to the party? Why was it not? that the Hindu leader would go to the Muslims and Muslim leader would go to the Hindus so that Hindus and Muslims understood each other. Does any religion teach that you rape, you kill, you sell at higher prices or you sell less than what it should be? Does it say that you should loot? No religion teaches you bad. It is not religion that is bad. It is we who are bad, who have used religion for our purposes, for us, ourselves. But Dr. Abdullah, look at the way BJP politicians deliberately, publicly taunt Muslims. Abba Jan, Yogi Adityanath has made a career out of demonizing and taunting Muslims. Look at what's happening at the hands of vigilantes in Gurgaon. Namaz can't be said. Muslims can't run food stalls in Gujarat cities. They can't sell vegetable and bangles in UP. And several sections of the press spew communal violence. Don't you see this? Don't you see this? This affects all of us. There is a silent majority of this country who are not communal. The problem is they don't speak. They don't come forward. 
That's the tragedy of this nation. They win on 37 percent. In which case, where is what, the rest of the vote? In which case, what does it feel like to be a Muslim in India today? Taunted by the BJP, attacked by vigilantes, the silent majority you believe supports you, but it keeps silent. What does it feel like to be a Muslim in Modi's India? It feels terrible. But that Muslim who has faith in Allah is not afraid. I'm not afraid. Because I know death is not in their hands. I am the one who will give you honor and I am the one who will give you dishonor. I am the one who feeds you. I will feed you. Hold my rope strongly. I hold Allah's rope strongly. That he will take us out of this tragedy. Moses will be born. There was frown. Pharaoh, who called himself God, built his own temples, used Bani Israel, who believed in Allah, and tortured, like Muslims are being tortured today. He said, Moses, he was born to a Muslim family. Pharaoh's wife, Saw this child's cry when he was killing all the children because he had told him that boy will be born who will destroy you. In that very house, Moses grew. And when he grew, God sent him back and said, Moses, now go. Tell him that I am God, you are not God. And when he didn't listen, what did Moses do? He said, Moses, take your people away. But there was sea in front. But and what? he said, now put your sick before the sea. Sea divided. And Pharaoh and all his army blew. God, God gave Moses the vision to take the people to another country. He will create another Moses. You be sure about it. He will come. He will save this nation, I'm telling you. It will happen. It will happen. But I'm confident. But it will happen in this nation. He won't take people away. Not the question of taking away. It will happen in this nation. In this nation, people will wake up. When? He will. When? Soon. Soon. Right. I have faith in that Allah. And that I'm sure. That is what you're really saying, that at the end of the day, the security Muslims have as they are taunted, as they are reduced to second class citizens. The only to those Muslims, I'll say through your channel, trust in Allah and follow his principles, follow his methods. Do not create hate. They may do anything to you. Don't have hate for them because they are misguided. Do not hate them. But pray to God and say, Allah, please guide them rightly. Please bring them on the path of righteousness. And that is what we hope. All right, Dr. Abdullah. God is your hope. Yes. And people are my hope. Both. Thank you very much for this very powerful interview. Take care. Stay safe. Thank you.